In this lesson, we will cover the requirements for controlling hazardous energy, commonly referred to as lockout tagout. Only employees specifically trained by McCollin may lock out equipment or participate in group lockout. After completing this lesson, you will be authorized to participate in our lockout tagout process. For those of you that are new to the term lockout tagout, it is a safety procedure used to protect you and others from potential harm where a serious injury, including death, can occur. From the unintentional startup or movement of equipment, from contact with hazardous energy sources, or when machine safeguards must be removed, example, during service or maintenance activities. It is estimated that lockout tagout saves 120 fatalities and about 50,000 injuries each year in the United States. Before being authorized to lock out equipment or to participate in group lockout, you must have a clear understanding of our lockout tagout procedures, your personal responsibility, how to recognize hazardous energy sources, how to perform simple lockout, and how to participate in group lockout. Most people associate lockout tagout with controlling electricity. However, that is only part of it. Hazardous energy can come in many forms, including electrical, mechanical, chemical, hydraulic, pneumatic, thermal, and stored or residual energy. Our lockout program is designed to protect you from all forms of energy that can cause harm, including the unintentional startup or movement of equipment or machines. Typical energy sources encountered included, but not limited to, robots, conveyors, chains, and fans. In order to protect you and your team members, lockout must be used whenever a machine or equipment is cleaned or serviced and some form of hazardous energy exists or the unexpected startup could occur. If performing equipment maintenance, remember that only qualified electricians are permitted to work on electrical systems and equipment. Never attempt to perform an electrical work unless qualified to do so by McCullen. The following are terms used in lockout tagout that you will need to be familiar with. An affected employee is one who works near or in an area where our servicing, cleaning, or maintenance is being performed. An example, a person whose job is affected by our lockout tagout process. An authorized employee is a person who we have trained to participate in the lockout tagout process. A primary authorized employee, a PAE, is a knowledgeable individual specifically trained in lockout tagout procedures and who is the only person authorized to initiate and supervise group lockout. We will refer to this person as the lockout supervisor. Upon satisfactorily completing this lesson, you will be authorized to perform work where lockout is required. In such instances, you will be given your own individual lock either temporarily or permanently. Although the specific lock color may vary due to customer requirements, our company standard is for these individual locks to be a unique color. You are responsible for your lock and key. Do not lose either. There are two types of lockout, simple and group. Let's take a look at the difference. Simple lockout is used when a job is relatively straightforward, involves only one energy isolation point, and is expected to last no longer than one shift. The team member places his or her individual lock on the energy isolation device and verifies that the energy has been dissipated. Group lockout is used when there are multiple energy isolation points. A lock box is utilized to secure inside the box the keys to all energy isolation locks. A control lock is then placed on the lock box by the lockout supervisor to secure the keys so the equipment cannot be operated until the locks are removed. Next, the individual locks of all participants are placed on the lock box. These are secured by each individual placing his or her lock on the lock box. As an authorized person, you will be able to perform simple lockout or participate in group lockout. First, let's take a look at simple lockout to ensure this is understood. 
Simple lockout can be used when there is only one energy source that must be de-energized. Once on site, you will be shown the specific lockout points, but the basic steps involved are notification of anyone affected by the lockout, the machinery or equipment must be shut down and the energy source isolated, if the energy source is stored energy, it must be safely restrained or removed from the machine. The machine must be tested, an example would be an attempt to restart, to ensure that the isolation and de-energization have occurred. If a hasp is used, place no more than five locks on it. This leaves one opening for placing an additional hasp if more individuals participate in the lockout. Do not Christmas tree locks, an example looping together locks. In group lockout, energy isolation locks are used to isolate two or more energy sources. Although there may be some variations due to customer requirements, energy isolation locks are a distinct color different than all other locks. Once applied to the equipment, the keys to these locks are placed into a group lock box. The keys will remain secure inside the group lock box until the lockout process is terminated. A lock is then placed on the end of the lock box so the keys cannot be removed without permission of the lockout supervisor. This lock is referred to as a control lock because it controls the keys in the lock box. Control locks are also of a unique color. Each person participating in group lockout then places his or her individual lock on the lock box. This lets others know who is in the lockout zone. Do not enter a lockout area until you have placed your lock on the lockbox and you are told by the lockout supervisor that it is safe to enter. A key point to remember is that entering a lockout area means placing any part of your body in the lockout area. This includes sticking your head inside to look at something. Individual locks placed on the lockbox serve as a way to keep head count of participants. Therefore, if you leave the lockout area for a break, to retrieve supplies, to go to the restroom, etc., always remove your lock from the lockbox. Likewise, upon completion of the task or at the end of the shift, all individual locks must be removed if the employees will no longer be working in the lockout tagout area. If the work lasts longer than one shift, all employees on the oncoming shift must be walked through the lockout tagout verification process by the lockout supervisor and their individual locks affixed to the group lockbox. Always follow these simple rules when the job is finished and prior to removing your lock at the end of the task. Replace all guards, hoses, lines, fixtures, etc. that have been removed. Verify that the task has been properly completed. Ensure the work area is free from tools, equipment, rags, and debris. Leave the area, remove your lock, return your lock to the lockout tagout visual display board. Strict adherence to our lockout tagout procedures are mandatory. Failure to do so will lead to disciplinary action up to and including termination. The intentional disregard of lockout tagout is considered a major violation of company policy and will result in automatic termination of employment. Abandoning a lock on a lockbox or a piece of equipment is also a serious violation and will lead to disciplinary action. As stated earlier, always remove your lock when leaving the work area. In closing, our lockout tag-up procedures are designed to prevent an injury to you or to a team member. Never put yourself in harm's way. If you do not understand any of the requirements, ask your supervisor prior to entering the lockout area. As a review, the process is quite simple. In order to participate in lockout tagout, you must be a trained and authorized employee. You will be assigned your personal lock and key. You are responsible for your lock and key. Treat them as a prized possession. For a simple lockout, place your lock on the energy isolation point or lockout hasp. For group lockout, place your lock on the lock box and enter only after your supervisor has given you permission. Place your key in a safe and secure location. An example would be in your pocket, on a key ring, or in your wallet. Remove your lock from the lock box when leaving for break and at the end of your shift. Before leaving the plant, return your lock to your supervisor or place it on the lockout visual display board. 
If you have any questions, ask your proctor prior to taking the competency quiz. A grade of 80%, 8 out of 10 correct answers, is required to pass.